they did. I'm telling them what we're doing. Well, we want to thank all of you for being here today. Uh, I want to thank all of my colleagues for joining me here in the epicenter of the uh, of the crisis that we're having on the border here in Eagle Pass, Texas. It's been quite a day. I'll tell you a little bit about uh, what we've learned here today. Uh, but I first want to tell you that we have uh, a great cross-section of the, of the House. We have 64 House Republicans that have joined us here in Eagle Pass. They represent 26 states, one U.S. territory. You have everybody from, uh, from, from California to Maryland, from Michigan to, to Florida. We, we represent over half the U.S. states because every state in America is now a border state. And we've seen that on vivid display today. Today we were able to meet with local residents, with sheriffs, with the Texas DPS. We also toured the CBP processing facility here in Eagle Pass, and it's been an eye-opener. One thing is absolutely clear. America is at a breaking point with record levels of illegal immigration. And today, we got a first-hand look at the damage and the chaos the border catastrophe is causing in all of our communities. The situation here and across the country is truly unconscionable. We would describe it as both heartbreaking and infuriating. Our communities are overrun. We have local resources that are being strapped. We have lethal drugs that are pouring into our country at record levels. And it's in less than three years that President Biden took office that this has happened. That we have over seven million illegal encounters at the border, nearly two million known gotaways, and that doesn't count the many that are undetected at 312 suspects on the terrorist watch list that have been apprehended. We have no idea how many terrorists have come into the country and set up terrorism cells across the nation. Last month alone, we saw the most illegal crossings in recorded history. It is an unmitigated disaster, a catastrophe. And what's more tragic is that it's a disaster of the president's own design. Uh, about an hour ago, we uh, had lunch, and, and there are a number of sheriffs that uh, work and serve here along the border of Texas. The sheriff of Terrell County was one of them. He was a former Border Patrol agent for 26 years, and he said in his estimation, it took less than six months for the Biden administration to dismantle 100 years of progress that the U.S. Border Patrol had achieved. Some of the first actions that Joe Biden took when he uh, rolled into the Oval Office were that he rolled back border security measures. They were put in place by the Trump administration. We all saw it happen. Remember, it was on his very first day in office that President Biden stopped construction of the southern border wall and he ended the Remain in Mexico policy. It was estimated on our tour just a moment ago that if the Biden administration would reinstate just the Remain in Mexico policy, it could stem the flow by probably 70 percent or more. But he refuses to do it. And since the time that President Biden took office, the administration has done next to nothing to protect the border. But we've all seen with our own eyes, they have opened the border wide to the entire world. It's estimated that nearly 170 countries have people coming in and flowing across this border. And some of these are from nations uh, that, that uh, have high numbers of concentration. And these are, these are not uh, people who are fleeing and looking for asylum that are in fear for their lives in their home countries. Uh, we have hardened criminals coming across that border. They're the ones being released from prisons from some of these countries and sent here to come into the U.S. Rather than incentivizing people to come, the president needs to deter people from entering the country. Rather than discussing amnesty with Mexico, 
as top uh, Biden administration officials did within the last couple of weeks, this administration should reinstate the Remain in Mexico policy, as was said. Rather than expanding parole authority to an unprecedented scale, the president should obviously end catch and release and stop the abuse of our parole and asylum systems. The president can and should act now. This doesn't require legislation. It requires leadership. And, and despite the White House's claim, he has all the authority he needs right now under existing federal law to stop this madness. But the message his policies has sent is the opposite of that. It's quite clear. Under President Biden, America has laid out a welcome mat to illegal immigrants, smugglers, and cartels. He is responsible for the grave threat to our national security and our, and our nation's sovereignty that these policies have created. But instead of taking responsibility and providing leadership, this administration has done nothing but attack elected officials who are trying to fix this catastrophe. The people standing behind you have worked hard. We passed our legislation more than seven months ago. You have red and blue states all across this country that are being forced to step up because the federal government has failed to do its job. Right here in Texas, Governor Abbott has heroically done more to enforce the law than the president has. And how has this administration responded? They have sued the state of Texas to stop their deterrence efforts. They have brought them to court to, to strike down their ability to put up uh, buoys in the water and, and razor wire and the rest. It's absolute insanity. The House has done its job. As I mentioned, we delivered uh, common sense legislation that will secure our border. But it's been sitting on Chuck Schumer's desk for seven months. House Resolution 2 was our, was our, our bill. And the time to act on it is yesterday. It certainly needs to happen. With each passing day, each record broken, this administration's dereliction of duty comes more, becomes more and more dangerous and more and more infuriating. And we are here to say that it must stop. What we saw today only made House Republicans more resolved to stand for sanity and the American people. And we will do it. If President Biden wants a supplemental spending bill focused on national security, it better begin by defending America's national security. It begins right here on our southern border. We have a, a, a few members here that will give you some more insight on what we saw today and what we anticipate. And I'll, I'll lead off next with uh, the chairman of our Homeland Security Committee, Mark Green of Tennessee. Hey, Mark. Chairman. I want to thank the speaker for uh, putting this codel together. Really appreciate it. Thank you for all uh, coming. It's important to bring uh, what's happening here to the American people, to all of the American people. I also want to thank the members who are here. You know, I first took the oath to defend the Constitution of the United States against enemies foreign and domestic on the plane at West Point when I was 17 years old. And for the better part of my adult life, I have spent that training and fighting foreign terrorists. And now as the chairman of the Committee on Homeland Security, I contend with the domestic threats to this nation. The greatest domestic threat to the national security and the safety of the American people is Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. He, through his policies, has defied and subverted the laws passed by the United States Congress. He has defied multiple court orders. He has lied numerous times to the United States Congress. He has, under oath, stated things that were blatantly, obviously, incorrect. He has broken his oath to defend this country. Even A.G. Garland admitted that the policies of Mayorkas are being used by the cartels to exploit the American people and make billions of dollars putting Americans at risk, hundreds of thousands of Americans dead to fentanyl, tens of thousands of young people trafficked into sex slavery, billions of dollars wasted, expanded criminal networks now connected to the drug cartels in Mexico throughout our entire country. Director Ray admitted before my committee the other day, our committee the other day, that with the border wide open and a war in Israel, Hamas can just walk right in. That's the director of the FBI. He fears for his own agents. 
It's clear this is intentional. Secretary Mayorkas knows the policies. If the AG knows the policies are the cause, Secretary Mayorkas knows the policies are the cause, he's doubling down. He's doing this intentionally. Despite the catastrophic harm to our country. Well, our committee has finished its five-phase investigation. I want to thank the members of the committee for their hard work and our staff. You're going to see a lot more coming here very soon. I'm going to let my colleagues talk about the numbers because I, I get to talk about them all the time. Um, I want to spend my time, my two minutes this morning, telling you that the cause of the problem is Alejandro Mayorkas. Thanks again to the speaker for putting this together, the members for coming. Every state and city in this country is a border state, but I want to say a special thank you and salute to Texas. You have borne the brunt of this, and we, we will not let you down. Accountability is coming, I promise. And I will be followed by the amazing chairman of the Co Judiciary Committee, Jim Jordan. Thanks, uh, thanks, Mark. And I, I too want to thank the speaker. I want to thank all the people in law enforcement that we got a chance to interact with today. Yeah, that's 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 kind of what we we, yeah, we we all know how serious this problem is. So I, I would just say this: I think there are the country understands the magnitude of the problem, but I think there are three fundamental questions we got to ask: What's the cause? What is the true magnitude of this problem? And then what's the solution? We all know the cause. The speaker said this: the cause is the policies of the Biden administration, and they frankly decided on day one, January twentieth, twenty twenty one, when he took the oath of office, they decided that day. No more building the wall, no more remain in Mexico, and they were going to release people who came to the country. And that became the incentive for so many millions to come to our great country. The magnitude of the problem, you've all heard the numbers, but I just point to two. Last month, record month, 300,000 illegal migrants come into the country. The pace of the Biden administration in his, in his term as president will, will reach 12 million when they're done. And I tell people that's the equivalent, that equals the population of the state I'm from, the great state of Ohio seventh largest state. That's the pace we're on. That's how big this problem is. And then finally, what's the solution? The solution is to go back to the policies that worked. The solution is our legislation. Or the solution is simply, I think, one sentence. No money can be used to process or release into the country any new migrants. To just say, suspend it now, which the president can do. But if he won't do it, we should put that one sentence in must-pass legislation. That, to me, is how it... Finally, I would just say this. I think in the end, it boils down to the will of Republicans in the United States Congress. Are we going to force that sentence, that solution, on a piece of legislation to get this done? That should be our charge. If we don't, then we're going to have to wait. Then we're going to have to wait for the presidential election and hope that President Trump is, our, is, is the new president where we can get back to the policies at work. It's that basic in my judgment. With that, I would yield to the gentleman, I think, from the home district here, Mr. Yeah, Gonzalez. Showing, uh, showing up matters, uh, whether you're a dog, whether you're a cat, whether you're a member of Congress, whether you're the media, showing up matters. And I want to thank uh, the speaker for, uh, for making this happen. I want to thank the speaker's team for being seasoned veterans and putting this all together. I want to thank my own team. This is our 24, 21st uh, Border Codel. And I want to thank our, our, our team for, uh, for working together with the speaker's office to put this together. I want to thank the members that have all you know, traveled to get here two days after the holidays. We could all be doing different things, but we are united in making sure House Republicans' uh, top priority is securing this border. And that shows, that shows by us being here. And oh, by the way, two weeks ago, there were 12,000 people coming over illegally. Under that bridge, to, uh, right down the street, there was thousands of people. In the Firefly facility that we visited earlier today, that has a max capacity of 1,000 people, there were 6,000 people. There were 4,000 people that were getting released. We were at the brink of massive uh, catch and release. And when that happens, our communities get turned upside down. And it's, it may start here in Eagle Pass, but then it, it, it quickly... Uh, reaches San Antonio and then it quickly reaches all over the country. Well, guess what? Today that stopped. 
Now, it may have to do with uh, the fact that the speaker and 60 plus members showed up, but it stopped. And the biggest part is 1,400 Border Patrol agents today are not processing migrants that have come, come into our country illegally. They are out into the field doing their damn job. And that's what I'd argue we are, are, we are fighting for the hardest. We want Border Patrol agents to get back to doing their job. How do we fix this? We end catch and release. How do we fix this? We deport people that are here illegally by the thousands, not by the dozens. And then, and then if you stop talking for one second and you just listen, like we did today, if you hear from the ranchers, if you hear from the sheriffs, if you hear from the judges, the mayors, the people that live here every day, they will tell you the same thing. And the nexus is this. You want to get the root of the issue? The root of the issue is the cartels. The cartels turn it on and they turn it off. And today is a prime example of that. So I have pushed, it is long time for us to label cartels as terrorist organizations. I, I, will, I will end with this. Once again, showing up matters. I'm grateful for the people that have shown up. I believe now is the time to, to make sure America is safe. And we do that by taking a down payment on border security in 24 with this team. And we come back for the rest when we win back the White House in 25. With that, I'll turn, over, I'll turn it over to my good friend and colleague from Texas, Beth Van Dyne. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate all the work that you have done over the last two, three years that you have been in Congress. You have really taken this, this issue. You have shown that you care. You've come down here with solutions. I want to thank the speaker and his team for recognizing this is a priority. This is a priority in our country. This is a priority for cities and states all across our country. And I come here not only as a Texas representative, but also as a former Texas mayor that took on this issue head on. We worked and we partnered with Immigration and Customs Enforcement. We had more criminal illegal aliens deport, de, uh, deported from my city during the time that I was mayor than any other city in the country per capita. And what we found was we had decreased crime almost overnight. We became the fifth safest city in the country because we actually followed and enforced our laws. We were criticized by sanctuary cities across the country who are now starting to feel what happens when you have illegal immigrants come into your, into your city. You can't handle the resources. You don't have it, whether or not it's housing, school, infrastructure, health care. They're finally hearing it. They're finally seeing it, and they're finally speaking out about it. We had an opportunity today to talk to several local elected officials, to several sheriffs. What they told us is we are not dealing with an immigration pro problem. We are dealing with a sex trade problem. We are dealing with a cartel issue. This is where your focus needs to be. When you have women who are brought into this country, who are being treated as slaves, who are still in, in, in hell and, in, hold in, emboldened by cartel members that takes 13 to 18 years potentially to be able to work off their debt. That is what we are seeing under a Biden administration. You have had 100,000 children come into this country and they've lost. We have absolutely no idea where they are. How is this possible and how under our governance is this happening? I will tell you another thing that they were very clear about was we implore you, and this is a quote, hold the line. You have the ability through your, your power of the purse to force this administration to do its job. It's sad that you have to do that, but that is exactly the position that we find ourselves in. Hold the line. None of us want to shut down the government, but we all recognize the fact that every single penny that we are giving to Homeland Security at this point that is not being used to secure our border, that is not being used to increase our national security, but is doing the exact opposite, it is weakening it, it is forcing more and more people quickly, more efficiently into our country illegally, is hurting our national security, hurting our best interest in killing our economy and local, and local governments. When you've had over 100,000 people that have been killed as a result of fentanyl, more than any other terrorist attack on our country, this is a time to take steps, this is a time to, to hold the line 
And we in Congress, we have a we have a bill, HR two, and I could not agree any more strongly with Representative Gonzalez that we do have to target the cartels. But we have a job to do. The American people are absolutely sick of the policies that they've seen in the Biden administration, and we will hold the line and we will fight to make sure HR two is passed, as well as other border security measures that will support our Customs and Border Patrol and help secure our nation. Thank you. And with that, I want to introduce Juan Fiscalbani. Great state of Arizona. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. I wanted to thank the speaker for his leadership on this issue. I wanted to thank my colleagues for coming to the southern border and seeing for themselves what we've been talking about for so long. And, of course, thank my good friend uh, Tony Gonzalez for hosting us here in this district as he continues this fight uh, against uh, uh, the border crisis that we're seeing. I'm an immigrant. Came to this country when I was 11 years old. Became a U.S. citizen in 2006 as an adult in my 20s. Then I was elected to the United States Congress 16 years later. No country in the world would give you that opportunity. No country in the world, only America, would ever give you that opportunity. So I believe in the opportunity this country has. I believe in the generosity of our nation. I believe in the American dream that I'm living. But this is not it. That's not it. With this crisis that Joe Biden and Alejandro Mayorkas have created, nobody wins. Nobody wins except the cartels. They're the ones deciding who gets across and who doesn't. They're the ones trafficking people and drugs. They're the ones terrorizing their own citizens. They're the ones that have no regard for human life. The men and women that we met with today fighting on the front lines for our safety are doing so with very little to no support from this administration, trying to enforce policies that are at best outdated, at worst, designed to fail because they're not working and the right ones are not being enforced. You've heard here today, we've been saying this for years, that every state has become a border state. In my own state in Arizona, in the Tucson sector, we saw record-breaking numbers in December. The trend is in the wrong direction. This administration has no answers and no will to tackle this issue. This is not a political matter. This is a matter of security and sovereignty. And I see some Spanish stations here, so I'm going to address you in Spanish as well. Este es un problema grave para el país. No es un problema nuevo, sin embargo, es un problema que se ha empeorado grandemente bajo la administración de Biden. Cero credibilidad tiene su administración y sus agentes de su gabinete que no han podido mover esta situación en el lado positivo de ninguna manera. Necesitamos parar esto y tenemos las herramientas para pararlo, pero el presidente se rehúsa a hacerlo. Como inmigrante, esta no es la solución, lo puedo decir de todo corazón. Es una crisis humanitaria tanto como lo es una crisis de seguridad nacional. Y necesitamos hacer algo inmediatamente. It's important to know that as an immigrant, Myself, and I can say that this situation is like with many other families, that it took us over a decade to earn our citizenship. And what the Biden administration has done, they've diluted the effort, the focus, and the sacrifice of so many families that have paid the ultimate price of leaving their country to come here and go through a long, rigorous process to become U.S. citizens, to be able to take that oath of citizenship like I did in 2006. And this administration, with their actions, has made a fool out of that process and has spit in the face of so many that have gone through the entire process to one day have the honor of becoming United States citizens. This message transcends culture. This message transcends language. This is an American issue that we must solve from every perspective that you see reflected here behind us. Our GOP colleagues get it. Our speaker gets it. And we will solve this issue. Amen. And the president needs to step up and do his part, right. along with Alejandro Mayorkas. Thank you so much, oh, Mr. God. Speaker. I want to thank my uh, colleagues and friends again for being here and, and sharing you that insight. We'll take a few questions if you have some. Sir, speaker, sir, so, uh, can we see a show of hands? Who will vote to shut down the government? No, we're not going to do show of hands. We're not in a classroom. We're not doing show of hands. Well, here's the, here's the deal on the, on the shutdown. We, we are working hard to uh, get the appropriations bills done. 
And the resolve that, uh, of this group and that you've seen with our votes and, and carrying over and crushing the Christmas omnibus fever as we did with our laddered approach and the two-step CR, we have until mid-January, you have until early February to get the approach bills done. We have been working in earnest and in good faith with the Senate and the White House virtually every day through the holiday trying to come to an agreement. Negotiations are still ongoing. It's drug on way too long. But the sooner we get that agreement, the sooner we'll be able to get the appropriations bills done. And let me tell you what our top two priorities are right now in summary. We want to get the border closed and secured first, and we want to make sure that we reduce non-defense discretionary spending. That is an important objective. You know why? Because we've crossed the threshold of $34 trillion in debt. $34 trillion today. It's a landmark that is unimaginable, would have been unimaginable to previous generations. And here we are. And so we have a responsibility here of fiscal stewardship and fiscal sanity, and that's the priority that you're going to see us pursue. So too early to prejudge any of that, but I'll tell you we're resolved on those priorities. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker do, you, okay. do you have, you've been briefed on these negotiations with the Senate. What is your view of them right now, and are they going as far as you need them to go? To the with regard to border security? Yes. Listen, the, the Senate has been uh, negotiating, I guess, uh, among members there and, and potentially with the White House, I suppose. We, our position is very clear, and we have made that uh, clear again for seven months. H.R. 2 is the necessary ingredient. Why? Because it has provisions that fix each of these problems, and these things work together. For example, you couldn't just reform the broken asylum process and allow this parole system to remain broken. It, it would be a giant loophole that would not solve the issue. You can't just build the, the wall without ending catch and release, without restoring remain in Mexico. These are the, the policies and the provisions that, again, had stemmed the flow in the previous administration. We know what works. It's not rocket science. And that is why we have said we are resolved for those provisions. That's what's necessary to fix the problem. It's not just House Republicans' opinion. It's based upon the informed opinions of the people here on the ground, and that is what they have told us. And they have reiterated this over and over and over. Desperately, they ask us to help them solve this problem, not just for South Texas, but for the entire country. And that's why you see representatives from all across America here to say in one voice that we have to do this for the people. And the White House has shown an unwillingness to do it. In fact, as we noted, they've done exactly the opposite, and it's shameful and inexcusable. Yes, ma'am. I can tell you it's a very complicated, complex issue just finding those people. You heard Representative uh, Van Dyne say earlier, tragically, nearly 100,000 undocumented uh, uh, children who were unaccompanied, who came across the border, unaccompanied minors, have been lost into the system. The, the, the administration has lost track of these children after they've been released. The, these people are given a notice to return for an immigration hearing. Sometimes it's four years into the future. They don't show up. A very tiny percentage show up. So the first problem would be even identifying all these people. The point is the longer we wait, the longer we delay the closure and securing of this border, the greater the crisis and the problem. We don't have a specific prescription uh, yet that we're proposing because we haven't gotten to that point. But I do believe in large measure because of this issue. I do think that we're going to have a change in the White House. I think we're going to have a Republican president. I think we're going to win the Senate, and we're going to expand the majority in the House as well. Absolutely. Listen, we have applauded Governor Abbott and all the brave law enforcement officers here on the border in Texas. They're doing their dead level best to protect their citizens, and that's his number one job. The federal government, the White House, the administration refuses to do it. So if you're the governor of Texas or a border state or any governor, you have the responsibility, the right, the constitutional authority to do the right thing and secure your people. So we have applauded him. We stand with him in that resolve and any other governor who's willing to draw the line and take that measure. And remember, everything they try to do, the White House has gone to court to stop. Everything they're trying to do to protect Texans, the, the White House is going to take them to court and, and have it undone. It's, it's 
madness is the only word that we can think of to describe this. And we hope it trees and I don't know. It comes to an end soon, and we're here to make sure that happens. Thank you all for being here. God bless. Thank you. Yeah.